After watching this video, you should be able to describe ketogenesis as well as ketolysis, listing the important locations these reactions occur, as well as describing the basic pathways, including the important key molecules and uh, key enzymes, and listing the uh, important ketone bodies that circulate around and are used for energy. So let's start with the location. And for ketogenesis, it's exclusively going to be in the liver, particularly in the mitochondria of the liver. Okay. Now for utilization of ketones, it's important to remember that the liver, even though it's making ketone bodies, does not have the capability to use them for energy. And the ketone bodies are sent off to peripheral tissues that have mitochondria and are used for energy. Um, so the, the, the important point here is that only uh, cells that have mitochondria can use ketones for energy. And the two important ones um, are the brain, neurons, and skeletal muscle. There's some other places too, but these are a couple of important places. Now for the pathway, um, we're going to be using acetyl-CoA as our ingredient. And we take two of them, condense them together, release a CoA, and we form acetoacetyl-CoA. And if we add another acetyl-CoA and condense it with this acetyl-CoA and release a CoA, we end up with a molecule called HMG-CoA. And the enzyme that's responsible for making HMG-CoA shouldn't be a surprise. It's HMG-CoA synthase. And HMG-CoA, um, if we um, lyse it and uh, cleave off an acetyl-CoA, we form acetoacetate, which you can see indicated by the star here is one of our important ketone bodies. And, of course, as you'd expect, it has a ketone group. And the enzyme that forms acetoacetate is HMG-CoA lyase. Now, aceto acetoacetate um, can be converted into two different things. One thing it can be converted into is acetone through a decarboxylation. And acetone really um, has important relevance um, as a uh, way of figuring out through physical exam if someone has ketoacidosis because you, you can smell acetone on the breath of individuals who have a lot of ketogenesis going on, a lot of ketones circulating in the blood. It's, it's um, exhaled out in the breath. Okay, and it gives a, a, the breath a fruity uh, characteristic. Now, um, if you uh, take NADH and oxidize it and reduce the acetoacetate, you form a molecule called beta-hydroxybutyrate. And um, I just want to point out that even though this is a ketone body, it doesn't have a ketone group. And there's some important significance there because um, some of the tests that are used to measure ketone bodies in the blood and as well as the urine, um, don't really measure uh, and don't detect beta-hydroxybutyrate. And so if someone had a lot of beta-hydroxybutyrate as the species that was um, contributing to their ketoacidosis, uh, wouldn't be picked up very easily because uh, the test would not be detecting this molecule. They, they detect acetoacetate, for example. And you'd have to maybe use a, a more specific test for beta-hydroxybutyrate. So that's just kind of an, an interesting um, uh, application to the chemistry here for the beta-hydroxybutyrate. Nevertheless, it is considered a ketone body along with acetoacetate, and they are, are used for energy. And you can see here for ketolysis, they go into the, um, the cells that have mitochondria in the periphery, like skeletal muscle or brain. The beta-hydroxybutyrate can be reconverted, oxidized back to acetoacetate, releasing an NADH, um, and the acetoacetate can go in and uh, be taken up directly. Either way, the succinyl-CoA transferase enzyme is going to use succinyl-CoA, which is a TCA cycle intermediate, and, and contribute the CoA to form acetoacetyl-CoA, and then you get a succinate, which they can go cycle around the TCA cycle again. Now, the acetoacetyl-CoA can be cleaved into two acetyl-CoA uh, molecules, which then can be fed into the TCA cycle. So the big picture here is that you have lots of acetyl-CoA in the liver mitochondria, and we're ultimately ending up with those acetyl-CoAs being transferred to a non-liver mitochondria to be used for the TCA cycles, 
TCA cycle there. So the reason why we have to go through this whole process is because the ketone bodies are water soluble. They're able to carry that energy, in, circulate around, and go and, and, and deliver that energy to these cells. You just can't have acetyl-CoA being released and float around the blood. So we have to go through this whole process to make these carrier molecules, and in my, in my mind, these are just carrying acetyl-CoA, and then they're just dropping them off, and then you're, you're dumping off the two acetyl-CoAs so it can go and make energy and go in a TCA cycle, okay? So the other point I want to make before we go look at the details uh, is that this HMG-CoA synthase might look familiar to you if you know about cholesterol biosynthesis. Now, that occurs in the liver as well, but that occurs in the cytosol, okay? And so there's another version of this enzyme, HMG-CoA synthase, in the liver cytosol that contributes to cholesterol synthesis, and um, you have HMG-CoA pool there too. Now, the difference, though, is the HMG-CoA that you're making in the mitochondria of the liver, it's used for ketone body synthesis. The HMG-CoA in the cytosol is used for cholesterol synthesis, and there's a different enzyme called HMG-CoA reductase, which we'll discuss in another video, that's involved in cholesterol biosynthesis. This HMG-CoA lyase enzyme, which is right here, that is the key enzyme that's going to allow us to make this acetoacetate, which can then be converted to beta-hydroxybutyrate or acetone. Okay, so just want to point out that there's some compartmentalization that's important. Now, um, like we always do, we go and look at the big picture, okay? So if we go and see how this all fits into everything, remember that ketogenesis is grouped in the liver with all the other reactions that we have turned on during fasting. And we can see that there is going to be a relationship between fatty acid oxidation and ketogenesis because fatty acid oxidation occurs in the liver, okay, during fasting in the mitochondria, and it's going to be providing that acetyl-CoA that's desperately important to make ketones. And at the same time, we're breaking down glycogen and we're synthesizing glucose. And all of these things are all going to be turned on because we have lots of glucagon in the fasting state. And remember, the opposing reactions are going to be inhibited during the fasting state. And on the flip side, when there's lots of insulin around during the well-fed state, all of these processes on the right are turned off, including ketogenesis, and you're turning on all these reactions on the left. Okay, so take-home message is ketogenesis is very active during fasting when glucagon levels are high and insulin levels are low. So if we go and look at um, how this would be working in the liver, we can see during the fasting state, we're having glucose leaving the liver because we're running gluconeogenesis. We have glycogen breakdown. We have pyruvates that are providing carbon uh, from... Um, things like alanine or lactate, and remember that the gluconeogenesis requires ATP, and that's coming from fatty acid release from adipose cells taken up by the liver, oxidized, and you get lots of FADH2 and ADH and ATP. And that ATP is critical for running gluconeogenesis. But remember, also during fatty acid oxidation, we're making lots of acetyl-CoA, and that acetyl-CoA, in addition to going in to the TCA cycle in the liver mitochondria will be shunted into this ketogenesis pathway we just discussed, and those water-soluble molecules are going to leave, enter the plasma, circulate around, and be taken up by cells that can use them for energy, okay? So that's how things would be working in the fasting state, and if we were in the well-fed state, all the opposite reactions would be occurring. We'd be taking up glucose, synthesizing glycogen, making fatty acids, and the acetyl-CoA that we'd be making from pyruvate would be used for um, biosynthetic reactions, fatty acids, and cholesterol, for example. Okay, so it's always good to keep in mind where we are and what we're talking about, and we're zooming in right here on this ketone body part, leaving the liver during the fasting state. Now, I think it also is useful to look at fatty acid synthesis really quick which is going to be happening during the well-fed state. And I just want to, just, I want to point out just one thing. During the well-fed state, in the liver mitochondria, we have lots of acetyl-CoA, okay? And that's going to go into the TCA cycle, uh, potentially, to make some ATP, okay? But it's going to be converted to citrate, and that citrate, remember, comes out 
and it, and it then brings acetic CoA in ultimately into the cytosol where we can make fatty acids. So the fate of acetyl CoA in the liver mitochondria during the well fed state is not for ketone synthesis, but rather to go and exit as citrate so we can make fatty acids. Okay, and, and, and so um, in the fasting state, okay, which we have over here, you can see that we're releasing fatty acids, right? Hormone sensitive lipase is activated, glucagon is high, PKA is phosphorylating it, we're releasing fatty acids, they're going to enter the, the liver, they're going to be transported into the mitochondria by the carnitine shuttle, we're going to oxidize those fatty acids um, through a, a, a few steps here, and now I have acetyl-CoA. Now, I just showed you during fatty acid, um, during uh, the well-fed state, we're making fatty acids, we have lots of acetyl-CoA in the mitochondria too, but the difference here is that this is going to go into the ketogenesis pathway, okay, and that is going to be um, what we're going to have go out into the blood to, to be used as energy, okay. Now, acetoacetate and beta-hydroxybutyrate, when they go out into the blood, I just want to point out um, this little thing here, which is indicating that they're releasing a proton. These are acids, okay. Um, and at the physiological pH, um, I think the pK of these are around 4, uh, they release a proton. So the downside of these ketone bodies circulating in the blood is that they do make the blood a little acidic. And that has some important significance because um, when we have very high levels of these in the blood, we can develop something called ketoacidosis. And that's, that's, um, that term is used because these are going to be making the blood acidic. Okay, so that's not a desirable feature of using these as energy. Now you can see here that the brain and other cells that can take up these ketones are probably transporters for these things. And there's the succinyl-CoA transferase enzyme we were talking about, which uses succinyl-CoA to, to, to um, hand off the CoA to make our two acetyl-CoA molecules, and then those can go into the TCA cycle of, let's say, in this case, the brain mitochondria. Okay, so we're really just transferring all of this acetyl-CoA, which is, represents energy, and instead of going into the liver mitochondria, we're shuttling it over to other cells that really need, they're low on energy, we're in a fasting state, and you can see here, we're just now entering acetyl-CoA into the TCA cycle in a brain cell. So once you have the acetyl-CoA, you know, in the mitochondria, the brain, for example, it doesn't know where that came from. It doesn't care if it came from glucose or it came from ketones. It's, a, it's no different. Once you have the acetyl-CoA, that can go into the TCA cycle and you can get ATP out of it, okay? So I think this illustrates very nicely what's going on during the fasting state. We really have the fat cell, which has our stores of triglyceride, feeding the liver fatty acids so it can help run gluconeogenesis. Remember, the ATP that we, that we get out of the fatty acid oxidation is used to run gluconeogenesis, but also provide the secondary fuel source that can be used for energy as well, okay? So I think that's um, an important point. So if we go back to where we started, um, we discussed that ketogenesis is the synthesis of ketone bodies it occurs exclusively in the liver mitochondria, all right? And the critical enzymes that you need to make um, ketone bodies in the liver is the HMG-CoA synthase mitochondrial version and the HMG-CoA lyase. Recall that the two major ketone bodies are acetoacetate and beta-hydroxybutyrate. Acetone's not terribly important except it could be excreted in the breath to cause fruity breath, okay? And these, um, these acids that lower the blood pH can be taken up by um, cells like the brain or skeletal muscle that have mitochondria and be reconverted back ultimately into two acetyl-CoAs and go into the TCA cycle for energy. And the key enzyme for ketolysis is this succinyl-CoA transferase enzyme, which is only present in cells that are going to be peripherally using ketones. Notice that the succinyl-CoA transferase, transferase enzyme is not found in the liver because the liver cannot use ketone bodies for energy. And that concludes this lecture on ketogenesis and ketolysis.